Peace, everybody. Welcome to the Vital Hoops Podcast. My name is Fernando Cardenas, aka International XB, and I'm your host. This is episode number eight. And today's topic is identity. Now, recently, we witnessed the 2022 NBA Finals, which we're going to get into in a minute. But as I said, um, we just witnessed the finals and there was this talk going on about Al Horford. You know, this, this whole thing about, yeah, Al Horford, first Dominican player, first player from the Dominican Republic to ever make it to the finals. And it was like a huge story, a big thing, like, oh yeah, um, there's a Dominican player in the finals and all of this. Now, let me first say that, first of all, Big up to Al Horford as a hooper, great career. I've been watching him since, you know what I mean? Since the Florida days, great run, uh, national champs with U of F, um, all of that. He, has an ama- he had an amazing career as a player, you know, still going on, but he's up there in age, but great player. Uh, much respect to Al Horford. But let's talk about this. So. There's this huge thing going on around, yeah, first, first Dominican player ever. And, you know, we go, we, we, we go to symbolism, right? So what does, that mean? what does that mean to the people in the Dominican Republic? The kids are able to, you know, identify with him. They see him play and, you know, they can identify. Now, let's talk about this because this is very interesting, right? I believe that it is very important for us, people of African descent, to identify as such before anything else, before any nationality. I believe it's important for us to identify as African people, as people, people of African descent. Um, I, I don't think it is good for us to identify by the language we speak. Like you hear a lot of people who you know speak Spanish because they were colonized by the Spanish and now they're saying that they're Spanish. You know, we're not Spanish. I say we because I speak Spanish as well. I'm Afro-Cuban. I speak Spanish. I speak French. I speak English. A bunch of colonized languages, but that doesn't. That's not what identifies me. Understand what I'm saying? So I'm Afro-Cuban. That doesn't mean I'm Spanish. We need to stop with that Spanish thing, right? We're of African descent, and I think that's very important. So here we go with Al Horford, right? Um, people will say, yeah, it's it's extremely important because the kids look up to him, and now they can see them, themselves in him, right? Well, if we had that more of an Afrocentric, you know, Afrocentered uh, way of thinking, well, all the black players that are that are in the league, all these black kids in the Dominican Republic should be able to identify with them right away, right? They don't need to wait for Al Horford to make the finals. They can identify with Michael Jordan because they're black just like him. Understand what I'm saying? Just because. They can identify with LeBron. They can identify with Iverson. They can identify with Steph Curry. You understand what I'm saying? Just because Al Al Horford speaks Spanish just like them, and he was born around the same area, doesn't mean they can identify with Black people from another part of the globe, right? That's that's one thing I think is very important. Um, and that uh, and that is all by design, right? The reason why we don't identify with other with other Black people in other parts of the world is all by design. That's how it's been in this world of, of um, you know, this world that we live in of white supremacy. Um, you know, it's by design, divide and conquer. That's the first step. You know what I mean? So these black people speak Spanish over here. These speak French over here. These speak English over here. So they're, they're not going to view themselves as brothers. They're not going to be able to communicate. They have different religions, different languages, right? And that's, that's, that's the barriers that we need to break. Right, we need to be able to see ourselves as brothers and sisters, no matter what part of the world we're in. Right, the, the, the African diaspora is strong, and whether we're on the continent or outside of it, we should be able to relate, because fundamentally, there there are huge aspects of our culture which brings us together if we look deep into it and we get away from all this ignorance. Right, so it's the same thing now, right? Um, you look at the NBA, I'm using a lot of basketball examples, obviously, because we're a basketball podcast. So when you look into the NBA, right, and you see, for example, if you search a, a list of European players, right, you'll see, you'll, you'll see guys show up European players. 
Dennis Schroeder, Schroeder, right? He's from, he's from Germany, right? You see Rudy Gobert, he's from France, right? These are black guys, man. You know what I'm saying? These are African, these are Africans, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, you'll even see guys like Yanis Antetokounmpo listed as, you know, is Greek. Well, technically they are, these are their nationalities, right? But we can't get away from our identity. I think it's, it's important for us to understand that. We have to understand, and that's for us to do first and foremost, right? We have to understand that, you know, we're Africans, no matter where we are in this world, if we're black, if we're of African descent, then we should be able to identify as Africans. I think that's key. And I have had the opportunity of traveling a lot, traveling to a lot, to many countries, living. I have, the, I have had the opportunity of living in different continents, right? And I can tell you one thing we have in common, one thing our people have in common all over the globe, no matter where you find black people, is the oppression, right? It's the lack of resources, no matter where we are, even, even, even on the continent, right? When there's white people, they have a better, they have, a, they live, they have better living conditions, right? And no matter what country we look at, the darker we are, the darker our people are, the more they struggle, right? So this is about uniting, you know, it's about feeling each other's pain and about growing, about building and growing as people, right? Uh, it's very important because, especially as basketball players, we have to understand that we're not just athletes, right? We're not just athletes. We're people first, we're human beings first, and we need to be connected to our, to our, to who we truly are, to our history, right? We have to understand, we have to know ourselves and know our history, right? But that's very important. So I wanted to get a little bit into that. Um, now, the NBA Finals. Let's get into the NBA Finals. First of all, first of all, big up to the Boston Celtics. Well, it was a great Finals, great, great Finals. I thought it was, it was really dope to see high, high level basketball, the highest level on the planet. And um, you know what I'm saying, on both ends of the floor. And uh, I have to say, I predicted the Miami Heat to play, the, to play the, the Warriors in the finals, and I was wrong. I was there wrong. The truth is I hadn't seen, I hadn't watched the Boston Celtics enough. You know what I mean? I barely saw them play this year. And um, they have an amazing squad. You know what I mean? And big up to their coach, Udoka. He did a great job. But all around, they had a great squad. My Jalen Brown is amazing. Uh, and they had a defensive squad, which I love. You know what I mean? Now, as a New York Knicks fan, I wasn't able to root for them. I was kind of going for the Warriors anyway. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, big up to the Warriors as well because, you know, I love what they've been able to do. You know what I mean? Their, 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 their culture, their basketball culture over there is dope. You know what I mean? They've been able to grow together. They've been able to develop players. You know what I'm saying? And I respect that, you know, uh, the confidence that they've put into players like Jordan Poole. You know what I'm saying? Um, the veterans being able to bounce to bounce back from injury, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, Steph being, Steph being so underrated coming into the league and turning into the greatest shooter of all time, you know, that's it's nothing but respect. You can only respect all of that, that work that they've put in and the results that show. So, like I said, I thought Miami was going to make the finals, but when the when the when the finals began, you know, I said I thought you know, Warriors are gonna beat the Celtics in six. You know what I mean? I did I did call that one. Now, I can't lie. After game one, I was like, all right, they're still gonna get him in six. You know what I mean? It happens. You know, game two came around, the Warriors balled out. Now I can't lie. When game three, I saw the uh, after after game three. When the Celtics won, by the way, the Celtics won game three, 116 to, to 100. And all the game, none of the games were really close. But after game three, I'm not going to lie, I started doubting the, the Warriors. Why? Because in game six, I saw a much bigger and stronger team in the Celtics. You know what I mean? For those of you who saw it, uh, I think game three showed me that, yo, the Celtics, even though they're younger, you know what I mean? They're just physically stronger and, and bigger and they were like they were out rebounding the Warriors in game three and they were and I started being like oh my god Warriors might run out of gas you know what I mean but it's actually the Celtics that ran out of gas 
you know. Uh, we saw that we saw it in game four as they came back, you know, and Draymond Green, Draymond Green had a great game. And um, you know, what I mean, Steph Curry did what state what Steph Curry does. You know what I mean? And we started seeing that actually maybe the seas were were not as deep as the Warriors, you know, maybe they could add a little bit of depth that, that might be able to help them for next season. But um, like I said, an, am an amazing series, all the games were kind of closed. Then we saw game five and um, after game five, I, I was like, okay, I think, I think they're going to close it out in six for sure. Because, you know, that experience, they knew they didn't want a game seven because, because, you know, uh, experienced players know that anything can happen in the game seven. Right. So the Warriors were going to, I, be, I thought they were going to close it out, you know, due to their experience and, you know, that championship uh, DNA. And they did, right? But the finals were amazing. Steph Curry got finals uh, MVP. Uh, he deserved it. Even though uh, Andrew Wiggins had an amazing finals, I don't think they could have won without Wiggins. I don't think they could have won without Draymond either. As always, Draymond is like the heart of the team, but... Steph Curry, they could have won without Steph either, you know, and not only is he the greatest shooter of all time, but I, I guarantee he's one of the greatest ball handlers as well. It's crazy. His game is crazy. So much respect to, to the Golden State Warriors in general, and um, I was happy to see a, such a dope NBA Finals. Now uh, we're going to see what happens. We're going to see what happens in free agency. It's looking kind of interesting. Uh, I mean, in, in the offseason now, it's looking kind of interesting with the whole um, Kyrie Irving thing. We'll see how where he ends up and how teams kind of shift um, over the summer. Now, uh, in other news, I mean, not news, but uh, the ball, the Basketball Africa League ended. Uh, another dope year for the Basketball Africa League. Uh, the U.S. Monastir won the championship. They're a team from Tunisia. Uh, they beat uh, Petro de Luanda. They beat a team from Angola, which I was actually rooting for. But, you know, Michael Dixon got uh, MVP. Uh, he had 21 points and six assists in the finals. And uh, it was great basketball as well. You know what I'm saying? The WNBA has started. Uh, and they're balling, as always. The Chicago Sky and the Connecticut Sun are leading, the, are up in the charts on the Eastern Conference. Uh, we got Candace Parker averaging almost 13 and nine. She's over at the, the Chicago Sky and they're killing over there. Uh, on the Western Conference, we got the Las Vegas Aces and the Seattle Storm on top of the charts. You got uh, Brianna Stewart. She's actually the leading scorer in the league right now with twin, averaging 22. You got Aja Wilson with the Aces. She's averaging 18. Um, WNBA is great basketball, as always. You know what I mean, uh, I enjoy watching it. Um, and then we got, we also, we still got this uh, Brittany Griner thing going on, right? Where for those of you who don't know, she was held back um, in Russia, right? When she came into Russia, she was held back um, by customs, right? By customs for carrying um, hash, hash oil. Actually, she had hash oil to consume and she got held back in, in Russia. And um, this was actually back uh, on February 17th, right? So it's been, what, it's been almost four months and a half, right? It's been four months and a half. She's been held back for some hash. Kind of wild if you ask me, it's a horrible situation. I hope Brittany Griner is, is, is able to get back home um, to her house with her family safe as soon as possible, because the criminalization of marijuana has to stop, it's enough, it's enough. Anyway, um, Euro League, for those of you who follow or not, you know, the Euro League, second best league after the NBA. So Anadolu Efes, a team from Turkey, uh, won the 2022 championship. Uh, they beat the Real Madrid in the, in the championship. In the championship game, I think Barcelona got third place. Uh, but yeah, the Euro League uh, is huge. You know, great basketball. Um, it was a great finals game. Um, the big three has started. Big three is on and popping now. 
Um, most leagues are done. The, the WNBA, as I said, is going on right now, but the big three has started. I enjoy the big three. This, for those of you who don't know, is Ice Cube's three-on-three -three professional basketball league. And, um, you know, there's a lot of great hoopers in there, a lot of ex-NBA players. Michael Beasley is on there. He's balling. Joe Johnson is balling, as always. I enjoy watching those guys, you know. Uh, one of my favorite players of all time, Mahmoud Abdul Raouf. Is still on there. He's 50 something years old. He's still balling. Uh, so, so yeah, there's still, there's still, as always, there's basketball going on, right? So, and, uh, you know, so, since summer has started, you know, the, the basketball, the, the summer tournaments are on now. You know what I mean? My favorite time of the year is summertime. Summer tournaments are on. The pro ams are on. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I encourage all you young hoopers, all you young basketball players to get out there during the summertime, you know what I mean? And play ball, play ball, play street ball, get out there. That's where you get your confidence. That's where you get your swag. That's where you get your game up, really, you know what I'm saying? Work out, you know what I'm saying? Work on your skills, but also play, play ball, play street ball. I think that's key that makes a basketball player complete and gets you ready for the season. So get into these programs, get into these tournaments, you know what I mean? And ball out. Uh, this is a great time of the year. It's also a great time for, for, for you young hoopers to start incorporating um, great habits into your daily life. You know what I mean? For example, start meditating if you're not doing that yet. You know what I'm saying? Start meditating, develop that into a positive habit. You know what I mean? And that'll help you as a ball player. It'll help you play, in the, play present, play in the moment. You know what I mean? So little things like that that you want to incorporate into your life um, into, and, and get, get some great daily habits this is the time for it, summertime. This is when you start. By the time the season comes around and everything starts moving too fast, you're not gonna, you know what I mean? You're not gonna be able to start new things. So, so start now, start now and get, get your game right and um, get your mind right and, and everything else will follow. All right, before we come to an end, I recommend, we're back at it. You know what I mean? Uh, we choose to recommend books here at Vital Hoops Podcast because reading is one of these things, especially reading books is one of these things uh, we have lost a little bit in our society. You know what I mean? A lot of the youth are just getting information from quick clips on TikTok and Instagram, and then they think they know something, but they're not going to, they're not doing the research, they're not getting into the books, they're not you know, doing the knowledge. So I recommend for today's recommendation, I got this, this right here, Message to the People by the great Marcus Garvey. This is a great, great quick read. It's a fast read too, it's not a, it's not a long book. So I really recommend this one. For, if you haven't read it, obviously, um, for all you young brothers and sisters, Message to the People, I'm reading it again now. I have it here with me. Um, it's a great, great short book to get into some, some, some real important things, right? And uh, and yeah. So as we as we said today, you know, identity, know yourself, know who you are, know your history, know your enemy. And uh, for those of you who's been, uh, you know, watching, you know, if you have been listening, you have been able to see. But if you've been obviously, but if you've been, you've been watching, you see on my microphone here, I got the red, black, and green. And uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, look it up. It has a lot to do with everything we've been talking about today. The red, black, and green flag. That's what it's about. You know, there's this huge, um, you know, uh, in most in these societies that we live in, there's a lot of anti-African, you know, uh, energy, you know. And, uh, and it's something, it's something real. It's something that we have to fight against. And it's very difficult because these systems of oppression uh, have designed this, right? It's by design. It's not, you know. So uh, this is why, once again, we need to understand who we are, you know, and we need to love ourselves and build together and grow. So yeah, Vital Hoops, we're coming, we're, we're, we're wrapping up episode number eight. So please share the podcast. Let people know about Vital Hoops. You know what I mean? If you're watching, please subscribe. You know what I mean? Hit the like button, um, share. If you're listening, um, please share. Same thing, make sure you share it with the people. Uh, if you're on Apple Podcasts, give us five stars. Um, 
You know what I mean? That's that's the way you can help us. And we appreciate everybody who listens, everybody who watches, and everybody who spreads the word. Um, we just want to say, um, well, we got a couple great guests coming up, uh, coming up on, on the Vital Hoops podcast, and I'm, I'm super excited about that. Uh, thank you to everybody who has participated, and uh, we're looking forward to growing, growing as a community, growing as a people, growing as a culture, uh, and building. Vital Hoops is for the culture. Yeah, peace.